Can you see a blank screen, blank screen, guys? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Okay, so some uh, basics first. <laughs> Excuse me. So moles, I will be writing with the letter n number of moles. Okay. Number of equivalents, I will be writing as eq. Okay. Hmm? So first we have to understand what is equivalence, then only we can start talking in terms of equivalence. Okay, so why do we want to do equivalence? First of all, uh, the basic reason is in stoichiometry, that means a certain reaction A plus B gives C plus D plus E or whatever that is happening. And we balance it, say two of A reacts with three of B, to give two of this and one of this or whatever, right? Hmm? Then in these questions, these are two moles of A will react with three moles of B to give two moles of C and one mole of D. All of you understand that, right? Hmm? So in a certain uh, 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 encrypted way, they will give you one of the components that this was so many moles. This was say 40 moles, okay, or 40 millimoles. And what you are able to do, you are able to figure out all others, right? Like how much will D be in the same ratio? How much will it be? It is half of C, right? So it must be 20, right? Right, guys? Are you with me? Yes. Is that here? Yes, sir. How much should A be then? Tell me how much should A be? 40. Say loudly. 40 again, right? C and A is same. How much should B be? So don't think of a 3 by 2 and this and that. You see that D is 1 and B is 3 times that, right? So it should be 3 times of D, right? So 60, right? Right, yes, guys? Sir. Yes, sir. So yes, the sir. point is, they will give you one and you can figure out all others. Now this giving this one is in various ways. That so many molarity and so much volume was used or so much was the molality or so much was the weight and you convert the weight to moles. There's various ways they give you, right? And we have seen in the previous class how they can make a long chain from where you have to actually derive how much was this by climbing up the ladder, right? Right, guys? Now, so this is all well and good. So why do we want equivalence? And then what the hell is equivalence? Okay, so first of all, why do we want equivalence is if we are balancing the same reaction, A plus B gives P plus D, in terms of not moles but equivalence, then surprisingly, one equivalence of A will always react with one equivalence of B to give one equivalence of C and one equivalence of D. Right? So that is quite cool, right? Meaning to say, if you have converted the moles to equivalence, then it would be one reacts with one to give one and one. Is that clear, guys? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that is why sometimes we want to do it in moles. But when you will see that, okay, we have to convert in moles and all, we are literally doing this balancing. I mean, the total math remains the same. It is just that what comes easily to your head. Sometimes people find it so fun that, okay, one was reacting with one and one. So they always want to do in equivalence. Is that clear? Is that clear? Secondly, the use of equivalence really kicks in is when sometimes you don't know the whole reaction. And since you don't know the whole reaction, you know only say A plus B gives something kind of a C and something, something it is giving. Okay. But then if you know the equivalence of B, <clears throat> say it was 10 equivalents, and you have to figure out how much of A was required. You are pretty sure that how much of A is required? 10 equivalents or not, right? Right? For yes. balancing, you should know the whole reaction properly. For our equivalence sake, at times you might not be knowing the whole reaction properly. Is that clear? So that is where it is quite a, quite an advantage. Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, sir. So now, 
the story goes something like this that from various ways of representation like more fraction molarity molarity weight you were able to get the number of modes right then you were writing a balanced reaction from there you were able to figure out the number of moles of the required thing and convert it back to say grams or molarity whatever format they want the answer and that is your answer right hmm? now in equivalence what we'll be doing is we'll be shortcutting this balancing of the reaction wherein from here we'll do that those number of moles is how many equivalents those equivalents will be of the other guy also so from there you will find out how much is the <coughs> number of moles of the other guy right is that clear is this map clear to you guys if not then take a screen screenshot that why you are doing it if you don't know the purpose of why you are doing and you just are using it you sometimes don't get the feel of the question is that clear guys is that clear yes. both are very legit ways of solving the question me as a student in class uh, 11 i used to always write the balance reaction because i was crazy about balancing reaction i used to like find it as fun okay and in our times you were never time pressed so much that you have to have get an answer in so so less time and all but you guys have tremendous time pressure so i think equivalence will work well is that clear okay now i'll give you a formula of finding the equivalence but then we have to understand that what it means the two kinds of compound in a reaction. I mean, if a certain reaction is happening, there are two kinds of reaction. One is a non-redox. Is that clear? And one is a redox. Okay, this equivalence concept has big time help in redox reaction. You can use a non-redox reaction, but it is hardly any different from your uh, balancing of reaction so it does, doesn't give you a big big shortcut it is only a slight shortcut is that clear what i'm saying if you don't understand any one thing which i say then you have to tell me is that clear guys is that clear yes, yes sir. okay so could you give us an example for a non redox reaction please yeah yeah i'm doing both i'm doing both okay so since we have done this i will just give you one example and then we are going to go to redox, which is the main part, right? Right? Okay. <coughs> what do you mean by redox, people? People, what is redox? Change in oxidation state. Right? Absolutely right. So what is reduction and what is oxidation? So reduction is the decrease in oxidation number, while oxidation is the increase in oxidation number. Absolutely right. In oxidation, if something was A was a 2 plus, it becomes a A say 3 plus or 4 plus, right? Hmm? Example, if A was, if B was a 2 minus, becomes a B0 or B minus, all these are oxidation, right? What is the reduction? A2 plus will become a Say A minus, A plus, A zero, whatever, right? Like zinc two plus became zinc is a reduction. Is that clear? Is that clear? A B zero like O2, where O is zero <coughs> power is becoming O2 minus or B zero becomes a B2 minus B1 minus. Okay. Hmm? Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, sir. What is reduction? What is happening in reduction? It is gaining gaining electron therefore the power the plus is reducing right and here it is losing electron therefore the positive power is becoming more is that clear like b2 minus was there it lost both the electrons it became a b is that clear yes sir so in a redox reaction what is happening if a is reacting with b to give something something this guy one guy is say losing electron 
then the other guy is gaining that electron is that clear if a was able to lose one electron and b was able to gain one electron then their balancing always be will be one and one right if a is the guy which loses two electrons and b is the guy which is satisfied by gaining three electrons then can somebody tell me what will be the balancing ratio what will be the balancing ratio 3a plus 2b yeah there will be three of a's losing two electrons each so it has lost six electrons and there will be two of b's gaining three electron each so it has gained the six electrons right because electrons cannot fly out of the flask where the reaction is happening one is losing the other one is gaining is that clear is that clear now you have to be very clear in your head if you know how much a is losing the electrons then you know what is the equivalence of a okay is that clear is that clear yes sir so if you know that how much to... of and i'll do it i'll do everything okay just wait for 10 minutes okay hmm? if you know how much of b <laughs> b is gaining electrons then you kind of know how much is the equivalence of b so there comes the equivalence concept okay wherein if i know how much of a is losing electron and how much of b is gaining electron i could have i could have also balanced the reaction right so it is pretty much the same thing it is just what your mind feels easy to understand is that clear is that clear now in a non redox <laughs> in a non redox typically a double displacement reaction or i can go as far as saying that always a double displacement reaction like we were doing hcl plus naoh okay what are the species over here anyways i'll just write the reaction nacl plus h h o h i will write h2o i'll just write it in a more in a format which is more convenient for physical chemistry analysis h o h is that clear h o is that clear hmm? so h was what h was the h plus cl was what cl was the cl minus what about the cl over here it is still a cl minus right what about the h over here it is still a h plus what about the na over there it was a na plus what about the na over here it is still a na plus what about the oh over here okay oh radical is a oh minus what about the oh over here it is still a oh minus so did any species lose or gain electron no it did not right right guys yes sir yes right, sir. guys yeah so pretty much technically if one has to say no there is no reaction actually which has happened okay everything was h plus cl minus na plus oh minus and that's the same thing which is there in the solution okay after this also but the point is this oh minus okay i'll reframe it okay it's not like technically not it has not happened this oh minus and h plus they are so much wanting to cling to each other and form something which makes all of us around us water that literally after mixing it leaves more of the na plus and cl minus in the solution right and therefore we say the solution is nacl because h plus and oh minus combine together and form h2o any which way the ions have not gained or lost electrons is that clear is that clear hmm? so in this case doing by molarity or doing by equivalence doesn't give me a big difference so i will still show you a non redox non redox reaction where i'll use equivalence to actually exhibit the calculation of stoichiometry is that clear so now listen very very carefully is that clear for a non redox the x factor x factor meaning to say in your mind you will say that they call it as n factor also n factor okay i call it as x factor in your mind you will say that one mole is behaving as if it is how many moles okay 
how strong the molecule is okay hmm? so strong is not the right physical chemistry word i'm just trying to give you a certain sense okay one mole is behaving as if how many moles it is okay x factor is one mole is acting as x number of moles so i'll explain this like <clears throat> i have h2so4 i have one mole of it i have hcl i have one mole of it okay the both are one molecules okay and i'll call it as sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid so i don't know the formula and all okay hmm? when i react with <coughs> naoh and i react this also with the same stuff same species naoh this is going to consume h2 as a 4 is going to consume how many naoh how many two. one h2 as a 4 it is going to consume two right wherein one hcl is going to consume only one right so one h2 as a 4 is acting as if it is two acids right right and why it is doing so it is doing so because it has got two h pluses is that clear is that clear yes sir so we say that one mole is equivalent to the equivalent moles are two equivalent moles of h2so4 so we say one mole of h2so4 is as good as <coughs> two equivalent moles so two equivalent moles is called two equivalents of acid okay is that clear is that clear is that clear so in the non redox we see the equivalence by simply seeing the cation power or the anion power what is the cation power over here two h's are there so two plus anion power is two minus is that clear wherein <coughs> here na what is the cation power one plus anion power one minus so one Na is as good as one equivalence only. Is that clear? But one H2SO4 is as good as two equivalents. I'll, I will uh, try to, it's uh, not a very good example, but then that is what is coming to my mind. So I'll just speak it out. Don't mind it. Okay. Hmm? Suppose somebody is really, really, really fat. Okay. And he books a ticket for aeroplane and he says that, okay, I am one person. So give me one ticket, okay? Hmm? So that one person, if he takes one ticket and sits on the seat, actually he is using up two seats, suppose. Out of the out of the uh, three seats, he is actually using up two seats. Is that clear? Hmm? So this was a little bit deceiving, no? That I am one person. It is as good as being two person or not, uh, as far as the seating in the aeroplane goes, right? Hmm? So it's equivalent to two, right? He is as good as consuming two seats. Is that clear, guys? Is that clear? So that is the kind of equivalence. If I say person, okay, that is like mole. It is one person. But he's equivalent to how many? He's equivalent to, in this case, it's a two equivalent persons. Is that clear, guys? That is what equivalence means. Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So, <clears throat> if I say HCl, then I say one mole 
is as good as one equivalence. <laughs> if I say h two so four, one mole is how many two equivalents? S three PO four guys, one mole. It can consume three mono basic, mono acidic bases, right? Because it has got three pluses, right? <laughs> is that clear? Yes, sir. NOH one mole is as good as one equivalent. KOH guys, one mole. How many equivalent? One. One. One plus only one OH is only so one equivalent, right? Hmm. CaOH hold twice. One mole. Two. How many equivalents? Two equivalents or not, right? Hmm. AlOH hold thrice. It is three. three plus. So cation power is three. There are three OHs. So it is three. So one mole is as good as three equivalents because if a reaction happens, HCl, if you have to balance it, it is ultimately going to be one of this consumed three of that. Is that clear, guys? Are you getting a hang of what is equivalent in non-redox? Hmm? Al two SO four whole thrice. Tell me how many equivalents? One mole. Six. Six. Absolutely right. Very well said. So it is two minuses and three of them, or three pluses and sorry, two of them. Al two SO four whole thrice. Right. Three pluses, two of them. It is six equivalents. Is that clear, guys? Is that clear? Yes, sir. So here comes the formula. So could you explain example? the previous example once again? I did not understand that. Which one? Which one? Tell me which one. So the Al two SO four whole thrice one. Yeah. Okay. So like, how do you get six equivalents for that? Total cationic power or total anionic power you have to see. Okay. If I have okay, to draw okay. it, it is actually Al, Al, three plus three plus yes, attached yes, to SO four, SO four, SO four. Okay. Just little mental diagram in your head. So this is the crazy molecule. Okay. Huh? Is that clear? Yes. Clear? Sir. It is a six minus or a six plus. So it is as good as something which was a a plus and B minus, it was like six of them, six A plus. Okay. Hmm? Okay. Yes, sir. How many I drew? Six or seven? Yeah, same B minus. Here, okay. It was as good as this kind of molecule. Okay. What the point? Yes. Sir. Yes. Here. Okay. So one of this is like six of this. So that is called equivalent. So understood. What is equivalence? Is that absolutely clear in your head? What it is? Whether you are able to use it in a question, question or not is your application, but I hope you have understood what is the equivalence. Is that clear? So now, if I do a balancing of H2SO4 plus NaOH, gives what? Na2SO4 plus H2O. Is that clear? Is that clear? Tell me the balancing in moles. One mole. One mole. So two NaOH. Two NaOH. One of this. And two H2. Two of this. Is that clear, guys? Now we just learned equivalence. Can you tell me the same balancing or tell me one H2 is four is how many equivalents? We just did it. One H2 is four is how many equivalents? Two. Two equivalents. One NaOH is how many equivalents? One. So two NaOH is how many equivalents? Two. 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 Right. One Na2SO4 is how many equivalents? Two. Two. Right. Na is plus one and two of them is there. Right. Cationic power. Right. Right. Yes. Sir. One HOH. One HOH is one equivalent. So two HOH is. Two equivalents. Two equivalents. Two equivalents. So what we are seeing is two equivalents reacted with two equivalents to give two equivalents with two equivalents. So if the balancing would have been in terms of equivalence, it would have been one H two S O four reacted with one equivalence of NaOH to give one 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 one. Got the point? Is that clear? In equivalence, always one reacts with one. Is that clear? 
So what's the what's the joy of doing it this way? Like this question is super cheap, so no joy at all. But still, I'll do it. Suppose the question was, I had the question was, I had 0.1 molar 50 ml H2SO4. How much NaOH it consumes? Okay. Method one. Method one. We will find the number of moles. Number of moles is equal to 0 0.1 into 50 m into this called m into b, which gives you 5 milli moles. Is that clear? Then I will write a balance reaction. I'm not going to write it again. This is a balance reaction. Then I will say 1 consumes 2. Therefore, number of moles of NaOH number of moles would have been 5 into 2 because 1 consumes 2, right? Which is 10 millimoles. And then I would have converted to grams if they were asking grams, right? The new method using your equivalence. Method 2. I will say H2SO4 given is how much moles? 0 0.5 into 50, which is 5 millimoles. Then the equivalence of H2SO4 is how many? How many? Twice of 5. Why? Because each H2SO4 is 2. The X factor is 2, right? Twice of 5, which is 10 millimoles. Then I will say in any reaction, oh, sorry, 10 milli equivalence. Then I would say in any reaction, one milli equivalence reacts with one. Therefore, NaOH should also be 10 milli equivalence. Right? So I'm not writing any reaction now this time. Is that clear? Is that clear? And then I will say that NaOH has got an X factor of one. So the number of milli equivalence is the number of moles, which is equal to 10 milli moles 10 divided by 1 okay millimoles which is the same answer as uh where was it undo here is that clear the difference this is a, like super cheap difference there is hardly anything but you are getting the point what i'm trying to say is that clear yes sir is that clear okay so let us move on to read off now okay so the formula the major formula is equivalence is equal to X factor into N. And in a re non redox, this X factor is just equal to cationic power equal to N ionic power. Okay, for non redox. Now, in redox, <clears throat> if you want to take a snapshot, you can take a snapshot. Okay. Now in a redox reaction, redox. Equivalence is again equal to X factor into N. Here the X factor is number of electrons lost or gained. That's not like plus or minus, either lost or gained. If you lose two, Per molecule, your X factor is 2. If you gain 2 per molecule, your X factor is 2. Number of electrons lost or gained per molecule. Okay? Per molecule. Is that clear, guys? Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So, Generally, in the molecule, no, only one, one, one guy is losing. Like, suppose, is KMnO4. After the reaction, K plus, whichever salt it forms, it remains K plus. It doesn't change the state. After the reaction, suppose O remained O2 minus. Okay, It may change, but suppose it remained O2 minus in some other salt. 
in some other salt okay i don't care and mn became a mn2 plus i hope everybody knows the mn over here is how much guys how much oxidation state over here mn here 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 plus here seven. Seven. plus seven why because it is a plus one and o is a minus two and four of them is there so minus eight right so the total has to be <coughs> total has to be zero so i mean it's a plus seven so when k remained k plus k plus remained k plus o2 minus remained o2 minus and if mn from plus seven became a plus two then this molecule mn is the only culprit by the way so this is the easier kind of redox which we are going to do today when there is only one culprit in the whole molecule so whatever losing or gaining of electron has been done mn has lost or gained electron so mn has lost electron or gained electron guys mn has lost or gained electrons it has become from plus seven gained. to plus two it has, gained. it has gained electrons okay so for math's sake i don't even care gained or lost how much is the change five is the change so what is the x factor five. x factor for the whole molecule and this you remember x factor of kmno4 is five is that clear is that clear it may be one culprit in the whole molecule, but the X factor of the molecule is five. Is that clear, guys? That becomes really, really tricky in the advanced kind of question when you don't understand X factor of the molecule is because of is, is the whole species or the whole molecule we are talking about. Anyways, it's five. Is it clear, guys? Sir. Is it clear? Sir, I have a doubt. Yeah, okay, ask me. Sir, does the X factor depend on acidic or alkaline medium? One second. Yes, it does depend, depending on the molecule. Like this Mn, in acidic medium, it will become Mn2+. plus. If I say it was some other medium, okay, which is your chemistry part, which you are not even come to, and it became Mn, plus four suppose then what is the x factor it is three right yes right sir. and here the x factor was five right <laughs> so it's a very good question why because sometimes they try to test you that okay you don't know the balancing you're not writing the full balance reaction but do you know that mn is becoming how much so it is like pretty much the whole of India knows that acidic medium, it becomes a two plus and the X factor is five. Is that clear? So we'll give you a list of, if you don't write to, want to write the reaction, balancing of reaction, you should be knowing what a certain atom becomes. So the oxidation state changes from where to where in few mediums. So it is hardly a big list. It is a small list only. They do stuff with iodine, they do stuff with Mn, then chromium and then sulfur okay so and nitrogen these have some crazy different atomic uh, uh, sorry oxidation states and if you memorize that then you avoid balancing of reaction if you can't memorize that then you have to balance the reaction okay is that clear so nothing is like very no path is a e very easy path so anyways we are going to do very basic ones so you don't have to worry about it so is it clear guys is it clear what is x factor if clear then give me an answer Yes, there sir. is K2Cr2O7. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, one second. Let me ask the question. Then you ask it out so that the others are thinking about the question. It undergoes a certain reaction and all. And ultimately, we are seeing that O is not changing the state. K always never changes the state unless the metal is coming out. Okay. And Cr is becoming. It goes to a certain compound and Cr2O3 is the compound. Okay. Is that clear? What is the X factor of this? And what is the 
uh, one second, one second. I'll give you some random compound, okay? Hmm? Uh, CrCl3. Suppose, okay, I'm just giving you something random, okay? Hmm? What is the X factor of this is question number one. Seven plus six. Uh, don't answer, please, okay? And what is the X factor of this is question number two. Yeah, okay, tell me, guys. Uh, sorry, what was the doubt? It's okay. I just I don't have a doubt. Can you just scroll up for a second? I missed the thing. I wanted to note it down. Just like one or two lines up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so you can scroll down now. Anybody wants to answer? Tell me your name. So, man. Name. Siddhi. Siddhi. Yes, sir. Which batch, Siddhi? The school? Sir, Primus. Batch? A batch. Cool. Bolo, Siddhi. Sir, the X factor would be plus six for K two C R two O seven and plus three for C R C L three. Okay, she says. She says this and this. Okay, I don't know. C R C L three. I'm telling you, only C R is the culprit. C L was whatever left hand side remained the same. Okay, I should have mentioned that C L is a minus one this side. It remained minus one. Okay, any other answer? Sir. Any other answer? Sir, may I? Name? Sir, Janvi. Yeah, tell me, Janvi. Sir, I think it's three for both. X factor. Okay, next answer is three and three. Any other? How many number of electrons gained or lost per molecule? How many number of electrons gain or lost per molecule? So there's a concept when only one atom is the culprit. Uh, sir, is it 12 and 3? So I got three different answers, but the right hand answer is consistent. And I hope that is right. The left hand is like you almost have the table of three done. Hmm? Nine is remaining. Okay, so let's do it. Right? Anybody else wants to say something? See, guys, you may be wrong. Okay, that's okay. But participate and do. Okay. So, CR is how much so o is a minus 2 state is minus 2 so oxidation number is minus 14 right k is plus 1 state so number is plus 2 so cr must be plus 12 totally so state of each one must be a plus 6 right now cr over here right hand side guys right hand side you see CR over there, CL is minus 1, 3 of them is there, so minus 3. So CR must be plus 3. So there is a definite change in the oxidation number of CR from plus 6 to plus 3. Right? Now, this molecule K2Cr2O7, which was having two CRs, okay? Hmm? Each one of plus six is becoming CR. How many CR? It has to become two CR, right? Each one of, we don't have to balance, I'm just saying, okay? Each one of a plus three, right? So each CR lost, uh, sorry, gained three electrons. So two CR must have gained how much? So I have to see for the whole molecule. Whole molecule had, had two CRs. 
each CR, each CR when it went from a plus six to a plus three, it gained three electrons, right? Right? Right, yes. guys? But there were two CRs in the molecule, and we are responsible for the whole molecule, I'm asking, right? So it had two CRs. So two CRs must have gained three plus three, six electrons. This is the only correct answer. Okay? Is that clear, guys? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Wherein, if I talk about CrCl3, CrCl3, Cr is 3 plus over here. So it has come from the other side, and the other side, Cr was 6 plus. Each CR was 6 plus. There were two of them. Who cares? Each was 6 plus. So CR had actually, if you have to become this, if you have to go reverse in the action, it is losing, it has to lose three electrons. Okay, per CR. And how many CRs are there in the molecule? Only one CR. So three is the correct answer. Everybody got it. That's wonderful. Is that clear? Is that clear? Is that clear? So could you explain the first one again? Yeah. So whether I see from, see the worst part in writing on a tab is I can't show you from where to where I'm showing. Whether I see this reaction from here to there or there to here, it's clear that one CR atom is exchanging three electrons, either gaining or losing three electrons, right? One CR atom. Yes, sir. Right? Because one CR is going from a six plus to a three plus, the atom. Now, this is a molecule. If you want, I can draw it again, like just a representation. It has got two CRs embedded in it, right? One CR was gaining three electrons. One CR. There are two CRs embedded in it. So it must be gaining how much? Six electrons. Six electrons. So that's the air X factor. Is that clear, guys? So it's for like the entire molecule that we are taking into Absolutely. consideration. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is that okay. clear? Is that clear? So let's do yeah. a cheap yeah. question on this. Let's do a cheap question just to understand all of it. Is that clear, guys? Hmm? Super cheap, but it will give you a clarity and we can end the class. By the way, if a Ki goes from KiO3, will you be able to tell me how much is the X factor? Because I think I'll use this, okay? Hmm? As the other one. So it's six. So here it's a minus one. I hope you know, right? And here it is how much? A plus five, right? Yeah. Why a plus five? Because IO3 is minus one. O3 alone is a minus six. O3 alone is a minus six. So I had to be a plus five. So that this totally is a minus one. And K is a plus one, this K, right? Right? So if you don't understand what I said, you just can just take a snapshot because this is not the point of the class today of telling the oxidation number, okay? Is that clear? So the X factor for this reaction, whether left to right or right to left, X factor will be a six from minus one to plus five, right? Thankfully, one eye only here and one eye only there, so we don't have to see much into it. Is that clear, guys? Is that clear? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. If I say Ki became KiO3, it has oxidized or reduced? Oxidized, okay. So I'll make up a very cheap question, okay, so that I don't have to. I was opening a certain question, but I don't have time. I'll make up a very cheap question. Everybody write down the question. There is 0 0.1 molar. Okay. If they give you normal, if they give you N, then you actually enjoy redox reaction. Why? Because your equivalence is straight away normality into volume. But if they give you molar, then what is the equivalence? You have to get your X factor into the number of moles. The number of moles, number of moles will be molarity into volume. So this X factor into molarity is your normality, which if they do for you and give you, you should be happy about it. 
so earlier i used to crib oh normality they dia oh my god okay when i realized everything like that's the easier thing then i said oh they are helping us giving the normality is that clear but i'm not going to help you i'm giving you the molarity 0.1 molar 50 ml say k2 cr2 o7 okay was reacted with or came in a four what do you want guys just to keep it very simple no k2 cr2 o7 you were having some confusion let me just make it as k mn of 4 k mn of 4 was treated with ki is that clear is that clear and this in an acidic medium so they'll put some acid and all and maybe they give you a value also but it will be all bluffing okay it's doing nothing with the acid okay can you find the grams of ki it reacted with So find what of ki? Grams. Molar weight of potassium, you know, guys. K. Is how much? Thirty nine. Molar weight of iodine is one twenty-seven. Okay. By the way, it is it oxidized or it oxidized to this only. It is given. Okay. It oxidized to KiO three. It could have been given that it liberated iodine. Then what it what what it was? Guys, you have started doing the question. Sir, don't we need the molarity of potassium iodide? What? Sir, we need the molarity of Ki, right? No. Okay, I'll che. I'll I'll uh, give you extra information in the question. To liberate iodine gas, is it a valid question? If Ki becomes I two, is it oxidation? Is it oxidation? No reduction. Sure. So oxidation. oxidation. Oxidation, right? Is K N O four oxidizing oxidizing agent? Yes, because it itself gets reduced. Okay, so it's a valid question. Is that clear? I just made up a question of very simple kind so that you can just use the equivalence. Now the point is, we would be very dicey wanting to write the. Equation, balancing equation, and actually balancing this one, right? So, what is the path when we are little dicey about balancing or the balance equation? We don't know. We would like to do it in the equivalent way. So, what was the map? I hope you know the map. We just have to follow the map. This is the map. Where's the map? Where's the map? Where's the map? Where's the map? You have to do this. You have to somehow get the number of moles. Ayo, what did I do? you have to somehow get the number of moles of what we are talking convert it to equivalence then that equivalence will be the equivalence of the other guy also convert it back to the number of moles of the other guy and change it to grams right this is the map no and i'm just demonstrating a question on the same map 
and we are skipping the whole integration part. So to That's use to use equivalence, we wouldn't need the I two gas liberation information, right? Then how would you know the X factor if you don't know what it is becoming, which state to which state? Then how would you know the X factor, madam? Oh right, right, yes, yeah. Yeah. So we are skipping this, okay? Yeah, and you are right. Sometimes they don't say it is liberating. Then comes your chemistry knowledge. But today we are doing just math, and we should be knowing what it is giving. But over a period of two years, you generally know the equations. You know the equations at least better than me, because you'll be in touch of so much of chemistry. So this is the map we are going to follow. If you are able to execute this, then you have gained something tonight, and that's a good thing. I'll be very happy. So can you go to the question once? What do you want to know in the question? Tell me. So what did we have to find finally? Grams of KI. All right. And I'm going to do it in the map, okay? Just to show you that whatever we were saying is the thing. Okay, time up. Let's do it. Let's complete the map, okay? Sir, is it 3.24? 3 .24? 3 .2, I have not calculated. Good, I've got an answer. I'm so happy. Who are you, lady? Again, same? Sir, Siddhi. Siddhi. Yeah, sir, Sam. 3.24 grams. Okay, Siddhi. And who else? Tisha. Tisha. You are Tisha? TCI is all Tisha. Huh. Okay. Okay, guys, let's do it, man. Okay. So they will give you some information such that you get the number of moles of the reactant. Okay, reactant. Reactant. So have they given? Yes, good enough information. What is that? Number of moles is equal to number of moles is equal to 0 0.1 into 50, that is 5 milli moles. Now I will start thinking, shall I write a reaction or shall I do the equivalence? I am pretty confident acidic medium, I know the equivalence. What is the equivalence in acidic medium? What is the X factor? We just did it. How much is that X factor? Acidic medium? 5. 5. Okay, guys. This is the acidic, this is the X factor in the acidic medium. We just did it. Therefore, I asked the question. Okay. So, like this, you'll have to just mug up some 7, 8, or 10 at the max X factors. Okay. Hmm? Of which 2 or 3 will be so common, like the one I used it, that you don't even have to remember. X factor is 5. So the number of equivalents of KMNO4, KMNO4 equivalence is how much? 5 into 5, that is 25 equivalents, KMNO4. So how many equivalents of uh, KI it should react with? 25 equivalents or milli equivalents I should write, rather, milli equivalents of, of KI. Is this step clear, guys? Because that is almost end of story. Is that step clear? Yes, sir. Once you convert to equivalence, you don't have to worry about the reaction. 25 will react with 25. Is it clear, others? The rest, so many people sitting. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes. If, some, if somebody says yes and the others it is not clear, you rather speak up, okay? Because this, this, is, this session is for the ones who are not understanding. It is not for the ones who are understanding, okay? And the guys who really understand, please don't come for the, for the sessions. I'm telling you, uh, because this is like I'm just wanting to help the ones who are really not understanding. So don't spoil their chances. Uh, and here, the ones who are not understanding, you really have to speak up, man. Okay, we can't do much beyond this. So uh, you speak up, I'll be slower. I'll try to explain in some other way. But speak up, that I'm not getting you. Okay, you are taking so much of effort, taking extra time. I'm putting some effort, so let it let it be useful. 
Now, 25 equivalence of Ki, equivalence is our way of solving things. They don't want equivalence. They want grams, molarity, this or that. Add the max moles is okay for them, but not equivalence. So, we have to convert this to moles. So, number of moles of Ki, of Ki is equal to extractor. Oh, sorry. Is equal to equivalence. Divided by the X factor, right? That's the formula, right, guys? Right, guys? So now to get the X factor, you'll say, okay, what the hell was the reaction? So you don't know the whole reaction, but you at least know that Ki became I2. And we know that, okay, K would have done nothing wrong. K is never the culprit. I is the culprit. So I minus has become zero, right? Right? So each I has become each zero I. I minus has become I zero. So what is the X factor? It's a change of one. X factor is one. Is that clear, guys? Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay, what is the X factor of I two? Somebody speak up very fast. What is the X factor of I two? It is two. Very good. Well said. But nobody is asking that. Okay. Why it is two? Because each zero I became e I, each I minus. But there were two zero i's, right? Each of them became had a change of one. But there were two of them. So two, x factor of this is two, but x factor of this is one. Whatever I said, I said fast because I have already done it earlier and the time is already over. So right now we see that x factor of ki is one. Using this concept. Okay, we don't know the whole reaction, but we know this. Ki x factor is one. So The number of moles of Ki would be equivalence, which is 25 divided by 1. So those many, many moles. Now obviously, you convert to the weight. So the weight will be equal to number of moles into the molar weight of Ki. So right now, it is equal to number of moles is 25 by 1000, because those are millimoles. And the weight of Ki is, how much I gave you? 127, right? Right, 127 plus 39. So 166, right, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And whatever it gives. Okay. So that's a cool division leaving one zero. It is like uh, 40 over here. So half of 166 is 83. And half of 83 will be 41 and a half. And there's a zero. So 4.15, right? Oh. Did I do something wrong or what? Guys, no, that's correct. So 3.24, what the hell was that? I took it as 127 instead of 166 by mistake. Oh, wow. What a mistake, man. What a mistake. It is for the molecule. So many times I said, right? Yeah, you have to find. Okay, guys, got the point? Is that here? So the only journey where you have a little vigilant is this part. Okay? Converting to equivalence, then the converting equivalence back to moles. So you need to know the x factor here and the x factor here. Okay, Sayonara, the other session starting, which is, oh my God, it is 10 minutes late. Uh, Vignation, if you still here, you can stop recording. So, guys, if you have doubt on this, you can ask me in the next session. Okay, I'll keep the next session as a small one and I can so take the, doubts. We'll do questions where there are two or three culprits or many more, right? What, what, what? So you said, so in the next session, we'll do uh, rea reactions where there are more culprits in the compound, right? Yeah, but that is an advanced session. I'm taking basic session that I'll take in a class wherever it is required. It doesn't come in bit set. It doesn't come in neat. It doesn't come in. It only come in advanced. Okay. So it doesn't qualify for the session, But if you ask me, I'll take it. But right now, I'm trying to finish off where people are really stuck with basic concepts. OK? OK, OK. Yeah. OK, I may do I may do uh, more of this redox kind of reaction because I made it up. OK, so it was very easy. When they give, they give in a very crypt, in, in, I mean, a cryptic language. So oh, I'll take a real question and maybe do that one. OK, so yeah. OK, guys. Ciao. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow night. What, what do we want to do tomorrow? Anybody? Any votes?
and what do we do tomorrow no words okay bye thank you I'm sir going ang angular momentum i'm doing doing right now with the class 12 anybody wants to come they can join angular momentum so we hadn't completed pure rolling i mean like the rolling motion completely because we started titration so we could probably continue that